Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. The story on this thing goes, this thing was in use just up to recently, and supposedly it's all original inside. So supposedly, I haven't seen inside, and really nothing's been done to this thing since, well, 1947, supposedly, and it still works with all the original components. So I figured, you know what, let's check this thing out together and see if this is actually true or not. Now, one of the things that I noticed on the back, which was uh, just a wonderful piece of engineering here, I have to show you this. So I'll move this out of the way. Look at this thing. Just get the light on this, pardon the camera shake here for a minute. Look at this chunk of engineering. <sighs> Look at this. Yeah, what is going on? That's pretty looking pretty green in there along with this, huh? So these are obviously the pins. Somebody's taped up the pins. And they've carved this down pretty good in order to make this plug into what's in that little hole there. Yikes. That is one scary piece of engineering. Ay, ay, ay. Anyways, so we won't be using that. Okay, give me just a few moments here. I'll get some screwdrivers and let's open this thing up and see if it is all original. And then let's put some power to it and see if it actually does work like it's said to. All right, I've got, I think, all it takes to get this thing apart. So let's take the... Uh, knobs off here first. Came off relatively easy. Same with that one. And let's take this one off. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. That's a uh, nice soft mat here so I can just lay this forward. All right, let's take these screws out and see what's in the back here. Yeah, I'll just take them right off. Oops, that's another screwdriver there. Knocked it over. I always enjoy things like this. You know, they say that, oh, you know, it's nothing's ever been done to it, and it's been working since the beginning, and blah, blah, blah. It's been in my family for so long, and this, that, and the other. And, you know, it's always interesting to see. You know, maybe this is true. You know, you, you never know. Sometimes the uh, stranger things have happened. So I'll just take this out. Wow. Looks like some brief touch there or something like that, doesn't it? Maybe something poked through the back over time. Big old light bulb in the middle there to light up the dial. <laughs> Big bright light that just shines over everything. You gotta like that. And there's that interesting outlet. So there's actually something fit inside here from the back. So when you took the back off, it was like a safety interlock kind of thing. That's kind of neat for way back when. So, interesting. So on the bottom, oh, we only have one screw, and it looks like there could be two missing, so I don't know. Let's see. I'll touch this here. Okay. Here we go. It looks like, uh, oh, the speaker is part of the, f the front here, so it's gonna have to slide out, and I think it's gonna hit this top block here. So I have to tip this forward, somewhat like a Stromberg Carlson. And let's see if I can turn this upside down so we can see what's on the underside. That's looking almost completely <laughs> factory. Maybe aside from the uh, the Philco capacitor. So somewhere down the line, this got put in, but this wouldn't have been, oh, too far from its manufacture. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steady this thing and uh, let's take a closer look on the underside. Well, it's honestly looking like it is very original. If there was any work done to this, it would have been done, you know, very close to the point of this thing being released. Like this capacitor here, Looks like it might be the 
most modern piece in here. And it's probably not that far off, 6th of 1950. So, yeah, just a few years up, really. So, 47, you know, to 50, really. So, it's all looking like it is very original, so... Not bad. That I guess the original filter can went bad pretty early. Which isn't uncommon for older radios like this. All the wax C's are in here. Yeah, it's it really is. So the owner of this really isn't far off. So maybe they just missed this one little date that it went in for a quick service or whatever, right? So I guess the next thing to do is to see if the second part is true. What I'm going to do is hook this to a current limited isolation transformer and Variac supply. I'm going to bring this up slowly and let's see if it receives anything and uh, see if it actually does come to life. Okay, I'll bring this radio up really slow on the dim bulb tester here. So I'll turn this on. If anything goes wrong, these lamps will get very, very bright. So they should glow dimly, i.e. dim bulb tester. So I'll just turn this right up and I should get a bit of a glow and that would indicate that the radio is drawing current because that's a little bit brighter than normal and I can see a filament coming on right here oh and here too dial light doesn't seem to be working though does it that's loose ah there we go I'll just leave that off oh I hear static oh it's coming to life at reduced, you know, voltage as well, right? It's nowhere near the line voltage right now. Wow. Let's move this out of the way. It's nice and quiet. When I touch this, obviously, I'm introducing some noise into this. And that introduces hum. So. This is isolated from the chassis, that's interesting. So the volume control itself. is isolated from the chassis. Interesting. Turn that down. There's almost no hum in this radio. That means that that filter capacitor from 1950 is still working well. Well, I guess the owner was, uh, was telling the truth in this case. It's trying to receive at reduced voltage right now. If I flip this up, it'll bypass the bulbs and give this full line voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this run like this for a while to basically, I guess you could say, try to condition the capacitor. People would like to say reform it, but I'd like to just let things stabilize for a little while here before I actually give it full line voltage because I don't trust that original Philco capacitor and well, really all the rest of it at all either. So I'll let this run like this for just a little while while monitoring it to make sure nothing goes wrong. And then what I'll do is I'll flip the switch and uh, we'll see how well it actually does receive. It requires an external antenna. That's what this wire is for. So we'll give it an external antenna and see how well it receives. All right, it's been basting on that uh, isolation transformer and current limited variac supply for a long time. So. Hopefully this uh, capacitor will hold up at direct line voltage. Let's find out. Here we go. And it's now on. As you can see, I tightened the light bulb up as well, so you can see the dial. I don't know if that's too bright. Maybe I should cover the, uh, cover the bulb. Maybe it looks better without it. Yeah, it probably needs the bulb in there. Wow. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is this is probably just picking up noise the way this is here because there's some noise in here, so I'll just cut that off. Wow, listen to that. It went silent. Okay, so now I'm going to hook this up to the 369 antenna. I have uh, lots of videos on that, so I'll attach this to here and this to here. And I'll just tune around the dial. There's a station. Wow. Yeah, so just be prepared. I'm John. Big choice. Gray skies and just fine. service station. What do they get? Wow. 
Wow. With all those original parts, this thing is actually working. Wow, so it actually is working quite well. Boy, is that ever bright. The thing is really working well for, you know, all the original components. Now, I can obviously tell that the sensitivity is down, but it's uh, very, very surprising that this thing is working. And it's, with the original filter cap, there is just a touch of hum in there. Just a, just a touch of hum. So it's it's working very well. Yeah, I'm very interested to actually see how leaky some of those capacitors are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this upside down and uh, we'll take a look at some voltage measurements on um, on different portions of this radio. I'll be right back. The radio has been on for a short period of time. Let's see how much DC is leaking across this wax capacitor to the output tube. So what happens here? is there has to be plate voltage, DC voltage, on the plate of the amplifier tube in order for this tube to work. Now what happens is, is there's also audio at that point as well. So the capacitor's job is to block the DC that makes the tube work and only let the audio signal through. So there should be virtually no DC at the grid of this output tube right here. If there is any DC on there, what it does is it changes the bias point of the tube and drives the output tube into heavy class A. If the output tube is driven into heavy class A, it draws heavy current through the audio output transformer. As it's drawing heavy current through the audio output transformer, it, it drives the transformer more into saturation because there's more DC on there. But what it also does is it heats the windings and that destroys these audio output transformers. And as I can see already, the windings in here are kind of dark. So the actual paper is darkened in this transformer. So over time, as the radio sits on, these capacitors, as they heat up, they get leakier and leakier until you get a really bad problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the DC at the grid of this tube. Let's take a look at the DC here and see what's there. It should be basically zero. So there should be no DC there whatsoever. And as you can see, we have 0.8 of a volt. So we're approaching one volt of DC at the grid of that tube right there. And that is a really bad thing. So as this radio heats up more and more, that will pass more DC. It's just, it's a common trait of these old wax capacitors. And then what ends up happening is it ends up taking the tube out and a lot of the times it'll burn out the audio output transformer. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn this off here and I'll move this out of the way. Let's get this out of here. This is the stuff that's holding my meter so you can see it properly. Now, if we look at this, let's zoom on into that transformer. You see how dark that is? You can see how dark colored that is. So chances are, you can even see on the other side, it looks really dark over there too. So what's happening here is, chances are, this is, it is even getting hot right now. That's nice and warm. So what's happening is just that little bit of a bias change from this being on for a short period of time is heating that transformer already. And this is why if you ever purchase one of these older radios, say from an auction or whatever, and somebody offers to demonstrate it to you, but it hasn't been rebuilt, I always say, no, don't plug it in, don't turn it on, because that might be the last time that it actually works. A really common failure point is these filter capacitors. What they end up doing is they short and then they blow the cathode bonding wire off of the rectifier tube. So then you have a bad filter, you have a bad rectifier tube, and then you have to go through and rebuild all of this. Now, mind you, these tubes are still available. You can find these all over the place. Let's see if I can get this rectifier tube out to show you. There it is. So I don't know if I can zoom into that cathode bonding wire for you. It's a connection wire that they've... Uh, you see that little connection wire right there? That acts as a fusible link inside the tube. That little wire right there that connects to this little pipe that's in the center here. You can see a little bit of that pipe there. That's in the center of this here. That's the cathode. 
And then what happens is the DC is present on that point and it comes out here and then runs out to one of the pins on the bottom of the tube. Well, that's the part that goes away. If the capacitor shorts, it just destroys this little strip that connects from the cathode to that lead out. Now, again, these tubes here are still you know, relatively available. 35Z5 is a pretty common rectifier tube. All this is is a diode. All right, that's all that this is. So they're still relatively available, but you know what? It'll cost you some money if, you know, something goes away. Now, there's a lot of other things that can happen with a radio that's all original like this. There's a lot of capacitors that can fail. It can cause failure of the IF transformers. It can cause more tubes to fail. It can burn all sorts of things out. So always keep that in mind. If somebody offers to demonstrate a radio to you, they say it works, all right, but you know, they're saying, I'll, I'll plug it in and show it on. If they say it works, it's almost worth, in my own opinion, of course, this is up to you. It's almost worth just saying, okay, if you say it works, you know what, I really want the radio or whatever. I'm willing to take the chance. I'll, you know, and then take the thing and then of course rebuild it before you power it up. Or of course, like I did, you know, uh, have a current limited isolation transformer and a variac supply where you can bring the thing up safely. Plugging this directly into a wall is not a safe thing at this age for multiple reasons, which I've talked about in many of my other videos. So something to keep in mind. So this will make a really nice restoration. It's working well already with what's in here, you know, and who knows how long it would keep running. As you can see, this is, you know, going bad very fast. So uh, this radio should come back to life and be a very nice restoration. If you'd like to see this radio restored in the near future, you can leave that in the comments below. We'll go through the entire procedure together. Hope you enjoyed. See you all very soon. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.